So they parted it out. Do you know how many of these I see? Hey, Bubble Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about some big money bolos. I'm gonna tell you where they got it, what they paid for it, and what it sold for. And these are items that you can pick up at everyday places like thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna be talking to you about Nina's Jewels. That's who I am gonna be featuring today. Her and her husband are resellers with awesome YouTube reseller content. Please go subscribe to them. They are incredible. I will link their YouTube channel down below. When you get to their YouTube channel, all of their links are also up here in the corner of their banner. So you can find them there, but you can also find them on eBay at Nina's Jewels, and I will link that down below as well. All right, let's get started with some of their big money bolos. The first item, and we're going to start, um, I actually, you know what? I think these are a little bit mixed up. I was thinking that we went from low to high, but I think they're mixed up. So just stay tuned. But either way, you guys are going to see some great unexpected items here. This is a vintage 1991 Cabbage Pat's Cabbage Patch Kids battery operated my own baby doll. Passy Cries Works. So they did put a video in their listing. So if you go in here and you push the button, whoo, let's shrink that down. You can see what it does there. All right. So um, yeah, it cries. Has anyone ever seen this doll before? I sure have not. And let's see. I got my papers mixed up here. It says, this is a vintage battery operated CPK doll from the 90s. You take the passy out of the mouth and the doll cries. Put it back in and it stops. We got it at, with a lot of CPKs we bought from a seller on Marketplace. Our cost per doll was $4.44, and this one sold on best offer of $25 plus shipping. The next item is another kind of unexpected one, probably maybe a little easier to find. Barney and the Backyard Gang, Three Wishes, starring Sandy Duncan. So they, um, well, they're going to tell us about this. They said, if you see a vintage Barney VHS is worth picking up at the right price. We have sold them in lots of over $50, and there are also rare titles like this one that sell for good money as a standalone. Three Wishes is one of the most sought-after titles. You are looking for the version with Sandy Duncan and the version where Barney is dark purple instead of plum color. We found this one at the thrift store for $0.24, cents and it sold for our full asking price of $37.99. 90s children's VHS is a bolo category we make lots of money on. Honestly, I would love for them to do a video with more information like this because, I mean, they were very, very specific. Barney has to be a certain color. And, you know, so it has to do with the cover also. So really, really cool information. $37.99 on this. Uh, in the This Is My Bolo video I did, they talked about selling VHS and bundles. So if you missed that video, definitely go check it out. Just type in Bolo Buddies, This Is My Bolo. This one is really cool. It's a vintage 2004 Toomey. Uh, I always want to say Tommy, but somebody said it's Toomey. Blue, so adorable, interactive, my little baby micro, and it works. So again, they've got a video right here. It used to be that you had to add the video down to the description, but eBay has made it really easy for us. I'm pretty sure you can only add this by your desktop. Somebody asked me the other day if you can add it from your phone. I don't think they've added the feature to your phone yet. Micro baby doll. This little three inch interactive toy is hard to find item worth picking up every time for the right price. They are very rare and always sell. We found it in a storage unit. We had paid 75 for the whole unit and that bro broke down to 28 cents per listing. Sold quickly for full asking price of $34.99. Storage units are labor intensive, but worth it. Our recommendation is to take the time to go through them with a fine toothed comb. You can find little treasures like this and even 
on a low value unit, you make your money back fast. It is worth the elbow grease. So let me know down in the comments. Do you guys, um, is there anybody here that buys storage units and flips them? flips them. And do you have any recommendations? How do you guys do it? Are you selling the bread and butter or are you only selling the big money items? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's a waste of time? Let me know down in the comments. I love this one. Five times vintage 1970s, eight packs, Hallmark party invites. When friends gather, these are vintage from the seventies invitations. I love these. These are vintage and came from the bins, the Goodwill bins. We have them listed in our spreadsheet for $4.60. They sold for full price of $42.99. I originally had them listed individually and they weren't selling well. I decided to lot together and they sold pretty quickly. Yes, so selling individually, multi-quantity and having it be more long tail or selling as a lot and selling them quicker. Most people, if there's eight per pack, they're probably going to need more than one pack. So selling them at a, as a lot may be a better option. I love this one. Also, you guys know I love selling toys. This is a Hot Wheels track. And this is from 2008. It says Hot Wheels tracks. These sold together to the same buyer for full asking price of $99.98 total. We got them out of a big box that was full of tracks and vehicles. I think we paid four or five dollars. We broke down our per listing cost to just 25 cents. So we paid about 50 cents for the two listings. This track is a bolo, whether you sell it whole or parted out. It is called the Mattel Hot Wheels Three Lane Super Speedway. This is not even when, what made me pick up the box. That was an accident. And this is why you comp everything. All right. So it was this one. And here's the second part of it. So they parted it out. Do you know how many of these I see? And I pass them by. Oh my goodness. Do not pass these by. Look at that. Almost a hundred bucks for those two parts. Hi, it's Wendy with Nina's Jewels, and this is my bolo. We found these Mattel Hot Wheels race tracks at a garage sale. We tried to put it all together to see if we had all the parts and pieces for it and realized we were missing one piece. And I was just so crushed because I had already comped it and I had seen that it sold for like $150. But my husband was like, well, let's just part it out. But that ended up working out even better because we immediately started selling parts. The first sale that we had was the two straight track pieces that sold for $38.68 on offer to buyer. The next thing that we sold was two listings to the same buyer and that was the two curved end tracks and the main launcher piece. And that sale sold for $99.98, which was our full asking price. We still have these switcher tracks to sell and we still have a trestle to sell. So we will make well over $150 that we originally thought that we would be able to get for the track. Definitely be on the lookout for parts and pieces from this set, which is called the 2008 Mattel Hot Wheels Three Lane Super Speedway. Well, this was my Bolo and check out our YouTube channel, Nina's Jewels. You can also find us on eBay at Nina's Jewels and on Instagram at Nina's Jewels LLC. This is a vintage 1957 Botany 500 by Daroff Men's Size 39R Charcoal Wool Lined Car Coat, USA. Excellent use condition. That is what EUC stands for. It says, uh, doo -doo -doo, here it is. Got this at an estate sale for $7. Took a while to sell, but finally sold on offer to a buyer for $58.38. Was in beautiful condition. So yeah, they did a great job of taking photos. They've got the measurements here. And they also have the tags. Uh, a lot of people are choosing to do measurements this way and not putting them in the description because it's easier, really. And just put C photos for, uh, for measurements is what I typically do. I used to put the measurements in the description, but I don't anymore. I like this method much better, <laughs> so much easier. This is a vintage 1960s women's size 16 aqua silver metallic brocade sleeveless maxi dress. And you guys are all excited that I got that word right, correct? Did you notice? Did you notice? Brocade. I don't know why I can remember that one, but I can. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> got it a garage sale that was full of cool vintage clothing. I was overwhelmed at this sale and totally should have bought more. 
uh, but I'm focusing on the amazing things we did get, like the gown prom dress that sold so fast for $59.98 on Best Offer. We paid $5. That's so funny. Yeah, you know, I, all the time I leave the bins or somewhere and I'm like, oh, I should have got that or I should have got this. But you can see this has some damage to it and it's still sold for a decent amount of money. Now, the word brocade, uh, Barbie items, Barbie clothing. I have sold some of the Barbie clothing that are this fabric and they do really well. Some of the vintage with the black and white tag. So be on the lookout for those Barbie clothes as well. This is a vintage Fenton yellow satin glass canary chick bird figurine signed by M. Wagner. And this was found in a tiny estate sale a few streets over. There was a huge decorative bird collection. I picked up four or five and this was one of them. Paid just a dollar and it sold very quickly for $64 on best offer. If it is signed M. Wagner, it is Fenton. Ooh, good information. There are lots of versions of the satin glass tabletop birds, and they all appear to be bolos. Huh. M. Wagner. Let's see if we can get a... There it is. Who would have thunk it? I didn't know about that. Did you guys? Did you know that M. Wagner was Fenton? 1994 Looney Tunes Western Collection Carmen Men's Medium Shirt. So you can see here it has Looney Tunes across the front. She said, we were walking through the thrift store and another shopper who we didn't know walked up to us with this shirt and said, hey, you should buy this. I don't know why. Maybe we had that reseller look. We were thrilled. We thanked her, bought it for $3.78 and it sold quickly for $47.99. She can source for us anytime. Wow, that's amazing. Somebody just said, you should buy this. That is so random. This is a Yamaha soundbar front surround system with cord and remote, and it works. She got this at, came from a Bad Deal palette. Ooh, Bad Deal palette. Paid $47.18 per listing for items off this palette. Ooh, $47.18 per item. Wow. Wow, there must have been a lot of like not so good stuff in there. Sold this one for $78.38 plus. Oh, free shipping. Free shipping on this one. You guys, I think they have all free shipping. Have I been saying not free shipping? Yeah, they do free shipping. I apologize if I said buyer paid shipping. It's such a habit of mine from doing my own buy, uh, what solds. <laughs> and most people don't do free shipping. I would love to hear um, their perspective about doing free shipping and why it works for them. Because I... There's no way I would do free shipping on eBay. I do it on Mercari, but not on eBay. Not with, not with, uh, you know, some states being so far away, the shipping is just crazy. Now, if you can fit it in a uh, padded flat rate or something like that, you know, that's different. But on those heavier items, ooh, that's tricky. Like that sound bar, they probably, depending on where that was going, shipping could have been pretty high for that. Hi, it's Wendy with Nina's Jewels. A common question we get asked is why we use a free shipping model. There is misconception that we lose money this way, but that rarely happens. We carefully comp items and inflate the asking price to cover the cost of shipping the item across the country and allow for best offers and promotions. One of my favorite benefits of this model is never having to negotiate on combined shipping discounts or spend time processing shipping refunds. Even if our estimated shipping costs exceed the actual shipping costs, the buyer is almost always happy and we make a little extra on that item. Of course, there's no right way to do it. Choose the model that works best for you. This is a Nordstrom coat found at a hoarder estate sale for $8. Not a brand we were familiar with, but the style was so interesting we picked it up. Use two important keywords, Y2K and mod to help it sell. Sold for $79.98, offer to buyer. Yes, Y2K. I have a whole video talking about using the word Y2K in a certain mall brand and it sells for big money. Definitely check that out. Type in Bolo Buddies Y2K if you want to see that. This is a vintage 1980s, uh, <laughs> is it Kiro or Cairo? I don't know. Super 8mm adhesive tape film splicer with box and manuals, Italy. And it's got all the little vintage advertising ephemera with it, which is makes it even cooler. And this one says, picked up at a thrift store for $1.62, sold very quickly on offer to buyer for 
That is a bolo right there. Here's another item that I walk past and I don't pick these up because I don't want to ship them. I don't want to find a box. I don't know what's valuable, what's not valuable. Do you walk past rackets, tennis rackets? Let me know down in the comments. Bought at a garage sale for $7 and sold it for full asking price through the eBay International Shipping Program for $89.99 free shipping. And you can see here, they've got really good detailed pictures, looks great. They're not using a background remover, but they do have it on a nice white background. Lang Men's Zero Cobalt Blue uh, Downhill Ski Boots. These they picked up at a church rummage sale for $5, sold on offer to buyer for $71.98. Here's a good example of how the free shipping model isn't always great. Okay, I was just talking about this. We sold these previously and they were returned the first time. When we get a return, we, we refund the full amount of the purchase price. This includes the original shipping we rolled into the cost of the item. On this item, we still managed to eke out a profit and the second buyer was happy. Returns make up less than 2% of our sales, so the benefit outweighs the risk in our opinion. Okay, so they were returned the first time and when you do a return, obviously they lost the shipping cost. So they had to include that shipping cost from the first return probably into their cost of goods when they resold it the second time. So even though they got them for $5, their profit margin was not as high. Plus the item was heavy and they live, it looks like in Texas. So Texas to wherever it's going, if it's going somewhere far away, it's going to be more expensive to ship. Hamilton Beach, and they sell a lot of heavy items. This is a removable dishwasher safe grid Belgian waffle maker, new in the new in box, original box. There we go. Picked up for $5 at a garage sale, was brand new in the box. The couple had won it at a silent auction and didn't need it. Sold in a few months for $59 on best offer. To give you an idea of the free shipping model and our profit margins, we paid $13.09 for shipping. After fees, shipping, and cost of goods, our net profit on the waffle iron was $33.43. So that is a great example of, even though they're doing free shipping, based on the location of this buyer, they're... They made $33.43. That's still a fantastic profit with free shipping. So for those of you that are kind of questioning free shipping, should you do it? Should you not do it? I don't know. I guess it's, you know, it's your business model. You have to decide what works for you. I love this one. This is a vintage crab tree and Evelyn pure natural bristle rosewood all round hairbrush. These vintage hairbrushes can be big money. She said, spotted my husband, Kevin, at an estate sale. Wait, oh, spotted by. I'm like, what do you mean you spotted your husband? Spotted by my husband, Kevin, at an estate sale for $2. It appeared unused, new in box, but we listed it as excellent used condition because we weren't sure. I agree. Always be safe because if you put new in the box and it has a hair in it, guess what? You're getting an item not as described if they decide to have some buyer's remorse there. Vintage hair. Well, it wouldn't really be buyer's remorse if it had a hair in it because it was misrepresented. So uh, good idea. That's what I would do is play it safe. Also, if a lot of times with plush, I do the same thing. I will put pre-owned even with with a tag on it because I usually get those from, you know, different places that I'm not the original owner. So to me, the plush is pre-owned on that. Vintage hairbrushes, especially ones with natural bristles, can be big bolos. I had a hard time comping this one. Could only find solds on the baby brush version. So I priced it high and hoped for the best. Sold for our full asking price of $79.99. This guy is funny, funny, funny. He is a CPay. C -pay. Oh my goodness. CPK. Cabbage Patch Kid doll. And he has on this posable outfit. So... He is not posable, but his outfit is. And I actually have one of these to sell. And I couldn't figure out why it had a wire in it. But now I know it's so you can make the doll stand up and be posable. It's action wear. I love it. Bought at a thrift store for $6.93. He was wearing the weird posable action wear, which has some value separately. But, was, but what made the guy really valuable was the number 19 head mold. All right, let's see what that means. Right here, 
number 19. So I guess that's a special head mold. They have lots of great detailed information to help us. I love this. Look for the teeth. We did an auction starting at $29.99 and it sold for $142.50. Yes, I have heard that the ones with the teeth, look at it. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, it's not doing it. There we go. Look at those teeth. He has lost his teeth. How cute is that? Wow, that's awesome. $142.50 on that. This is a Nintendo Wii bundle, two remotes, and it's got everything you see in the photo there. Console accessories and some games came from next door. Balance board game from a thrift store. Some games came from a garage sale. Manual came from a storage unit. Ah, things came from everywhere and they bundled it together. Total cost for all was $47.39. Sold on offer to buyer for $118.38. Magic the Gathering Unlimited MTG CCG. No clue what that means. Nightmare Summon Melissa Benson. Okay, so we have three of these cards right here. And she said, these all came from my husband's personal collection. He has owned since the 90s. They all sold on auction for the prices shown. Not all Magic the Gathering cards are valuable, but if you find them, they are worth looking up. A difficult category to learn for sure. I'm lucky to live with someone who knows what to look for. Yeah, these, you know, Pokemon, all these cards, trading cards are very, very tricky. Um, Victrola Premium Turntable. Came off a liquidation pallet that was a bad deal. Paid $47.18 per item. This item sold for full asking price of $187.99. Took a long time to sell and a long time to break even on that pallet. Yeah, that's a bummer. But at least you're selling some stuff. And hard to ship. Oh my goodness, that would be hard to ship. No way. No way. Um, expanded Coyote Runt Closure Kit. Three cable port. No clue. This is some kind of junction box. Bought at a thrift store for $3.47. Sold super fast on best, off, best offer for $150. Probably could have gotten more. I still don't know what it is. Some sort of cable port. There you go, you guys. Always look it up, right? Antique 5x6 ivory hand painted gilt porcelain shoe vase. And it's got the little cherubs on it. This came from a storage unit we purchased for $75. Per listing cost was $0.28. Cents. Sold on best offer of $169.98. So this is a great example of sometimes you source things really well and sometimes you don't. So the storage unit they got for $75, you saw a couple items that they turned $0.28 cents into big money. And then they got the palette where they kind of, it wasn't a good palette. Palettes are not always great. You just never know. So you guys that are sourcing from storage units or pallets, let me know down in the comments. Are you, are you successful? What is your breakdown of cost of goods? How do you guys figure all that out? Do you break it down by how much you paid for the total and then by listing, which is what they did. That's how I typically do things. Or do you look at like a manifest for the pallet? How do you guys do it? Let me know down there. And thank you guys so much for being here. Go and follow Nina's Jewels. I will link them down below, YouTube and eBay. And the other links are up in their banner. So you guys can check those out as well. Thanks so much for being here. Check out another video. And thanks for watching.